7 verse 5. For this is even all one as if she were shaven. So, if the, if the woman pray or prophesy with, with their hair uncovered, is a, it is a king like the woman not having the hair or aka shaved. Right? So a bald woman. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. But if it be a shame, a shame for the woman to be shorn or shaving, let her be covered. So the woman got two choices. If you want to pray or prophesy and your hair is not covered, then let your hair be shaven. And if your hair, you don't want to shave, then the next choice you have is you must cover your hair. But verse 6, I want you to look at a specific character there. He said, if the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. But if be a shame for the woman. That means that if the woman shaving the hair is dishonorable. It's a, it's a shameful act. That means a woman without a hair is a dishonored woman. And that brings shame. I want you to read this, then we will get into the meat of it. So this is teaching, so I have to go very gradually. And I want you to pay attention because this is a, a hot cookie. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is the image of the glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman. But the woman is of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman. But the woman was created for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Now, if the Bible is for you, I want you to underline verse 10. And the verse 10 is where one of the bigger confusion lies. And I'll read it again. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angel. Verse 11. Nevertheless, neither is the man without a woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, verse 12, even so is the man also by the woman. Hallelujah. But all things of God. 
Judge in yourself, verse 13. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? I want you to underline verse 13 clearly. Underline that. Verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13. Verse 14. Do not even nature itself teach you that if a man have a long hair, it is shame unto him. But if a woman have a long hair, it is a glory to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. Hallelujah. Now we are going to stop here. Because I believe that if you are following, you are, you, you, you are, if you are following, that something must be completely clear into you. If it's not clear, we are going to go through this. Because we have built, if I say we, I mean men. I've built a whole lot of empire based on these verses. And one thing that we have to be cautious and very careful is that there is a saying that the road to goodness is paved with good intention. But it ends up in evil. If we read the scripture here clearly, there is something that pops out. And what pops out is not a revelation. But what pops out It's a man amongst his coach, amongst his brethren. From the same culture and they are discussing modesty according to their culture. So the modest modesty according to their culture dictates That for respect and dignity. This is how a woman ought to behave. And this is how a man ought to behave. According to the standard of their culture. A man is supposed to lord over the woman. And the woman have to submit to the man. According to their culture, if you are a man and you got yourself a long hair, It's dishonorable. Why? Because you being a man, you got a hair of a woman. And that is not manly. A man must be a man and a woman must remain a woman. Hallelujah. So that seems a complete understanding according to their culture. According to how they have understood the situation. But if you pay attention. 
And you look around. If you're an observant person, you realize there are many churches, there are many preachers who are making a big deal out of the culture of which these gentlemen discussed these issues. And it makes sense, ladies and gentlemen, because sometimes it appears that men just want to lord over women. So that's okay. Those cultures dictate that a man must be the lord of a woman. Then besides that, the woman have to pray in a specific way. And if a woman wants to pray and she refuses or she forgets to cover her hair, then that is dishonorable. And if a man prays, or prophesies. And the same man covets his hair. Or the man have a grown hair. That same man has dishonored his hair. But the issue here is that. You realize that when you read from the Corinthians here. From the beginning, Paul, our brother, made some distinctions between a man and a woman. But as he got down, he removed those distinctions. And this is very, very important. Because if you allow the Spirit of God to lead you and you begin to dive into what is going on based on what is written, based on the language, based on the culture, you realize that the man understood that first he was talking about culture, but later he started talking about God. Somebody said, what is he talking about? Yeah, Paul is a human. He can make mistakes. He can give very information that the information that he was giving was going against the purpose of God. say but how and who are you to talk about this and I say I'm nobody I'm just a person that the spirit of God has just opened my eyes to see and I'm gladly I want to share with you because when we read down Paul himself said before that a woman and a man have distinction. For a man is not of a woman. But the woman is of a man. Therefore the woman have to honor the man. But when he got down. He had to reverse the case around. That now it does not matter whether the man or the woman is of each other. They have to honor each other. Yeah. 
So first he was talking about culture. But now he start, started talking about things of the spirit. And I believe as he was smoking, the Holy Spirit might have been started falling down on him and say, hey, 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 take your time. Take your time, my son. Chapter 11, verse 13. Very, very interesting observation. And I read, judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Now, this is why I call it the gospel according to culture. Paul said, judge it amongst yourself. So, in this case, that was not a revelation nor inspiration. It was consensus according to the culture. That had nothing to do with the gospel. It was all about the way that in that particular culture, things are perceived. In every culture, there is this honorable thing and honorable thing. In the old and ancient Nordic culture, a woman can be married but can sleep around with any person that she wished. Even though she is married. And if the woman conceives with anybody, whoever she is sleeping around with. And not a secret with even the knowledge of the husband. The child belongs to the man who married the woman. In other words, the child will belong to the husband. In the old Arabic time in the Arabia when the woman even in, 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 in even it is still in Islamic religion if the woman conceives while she's still married to someone else The woman bring forth a son. The husband could keep the woman and keep the son. But if the woman gave birth to a, a daughter or a girl, the husband could have the woman stoned to death because the woman has dishonored their birth. 